Hey everybody, James Yaker with Type Response. Thanks for watching. Well, I've done some long format videos I called No BS Bug Out that were like two hours long and um, with a bunch of uh, little reviews in them. And people have been asking, where's this one? Where's that one? Like they want timestamps because they don't want to watch the whole video. So what I've done is I've cut out some of those um, product reviews <coughs> where I talked about those things and I've made them into individual videos. You have to understand they probably won't make a lot of sense or total sense because they were part of a big thing and I might have talked about the bulk of it during the video that you're going to see and maybe little bits of it the rest of the time. So I'm, I'm doing the best I can. This is because people ask for it. So I've broken those up. Here they are. I hope you enjoy. Hey everybody. I'm here with Jay around ye old campfire and uh, he's got a good feeling about this one. I think I do too. I think, mm -hmm. I think we're going to have some warmth. Uh, well, I will. Jay will be in his before, uh, before mentioned truck and uh, so a list of topics and uh, and Jay and I will talk and he'll say what he thinks and I what I think and all that kind of stuff um, poppity pop um, okay so uh, let's say people want to know what we would do if we became uh, injured and they didn't say like if you broke your foot or your hand or shot, they, they just said injured. And uh, so for the sake of discussion, how would you handle a bug out if you sustained an injury to uh, one of your arms or hands? Uh, I mean, besides the you know immediate thing, any bleeding, you know, right, control yeah. that. Uh, you're gonna have to immobilize that. And you're gonna have to get uh, a little bit more proficient with doing everything one-handed yeah so like you're making fire for example you're gonna need about three methods to do that because do, do you have that, that rod I do got more of that. yeah you won't be doing that with with one hand unless there's something I don't know well I'm gonna show you something that you might not know hmm so you can you can if you can think your way through it um, but as I've already said before this conversation came up with Jay that you need multiple ways to start a fire one is none uh, two is one so anything that's mission critical gun you need I think you need two of them uh, lights I think you need two lights uh, fire starter I think you need two <coughs> fire starters and just like with your gun, you learn the one-hand manipulations. I believe you need one-hand manipulations with with your fire starting tools and your flashlights and your, you know, what, whatever whatever that stuff is. Um, what about an injury to a foot or leg or something like that? What do you think? It'd be pretty similar to that. In this, your mobility is, you know, down immediately. I told them if they lose mobility, they're probably going to die where they're at. Mm could be um, I mean you know it just depends on yeah, yeah. How, how you know how motivated they are to the uh, I thought telling them they would die would motivate them to keep moving <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, check your uh, right up here there's an ember on that <laughs> on I thought fire. it was a reflection at first well let's talk about that so one of the things about um, synthetics which I love so much they, they dry fast typically very warm but uh, cotton Cotton and wool, um, embers don't affect them the same way. Like wool, I'm not going to say it's flame proof, but it's very, very flame resistant. And so if a piece of ember got on wool, it's not a big deal, or cotton. But on, uh, if this were, this shirt was a full synthetic shirt and it got on there and now I got a, a real hole in my shirt and maybe, uh, maybe burned too. So, mm. um, we were back on, I think, mobility. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious if they are thinking in terms of like longer term, I, like I treatment know. or antibiotics or uh, fighting infections and that type of stuff. Like, um, so, uh, you know, you can carry this stuff on your person to keep somebody from bleeding to death from a wound through their leg or something like that, a tourniquet and a bandage, but it'd take a pallet full of stuff to get them well. You know, antibiotics and bandages to keep changing, and you know, and all that yeah. stuff. And so. a place to do it. And a pla and a clean, safe mm -hmm. place to do that stuff. Yeah. 
Um, so I, I don't know. When they ask these questions, I don't think they know what they're asking. And I don't. And I'm not saying. I'm not saying to be mean. I just think that they haven't considered. Oh wow, it would take that much medical attention or equipment or, you know, to 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 get through something like this. So I just kind of flatly said, lose mobility, lose your life. So I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> uh, suffice to suffice to say, you'd have to treat any one of those wounds like you would any other. You know, broken this or that, yeah. burned or cut. You know, there's a knife involved, or maybe a hatchet or a machete yeah. or. A, yeah, the, the odds of you injuring yourself, it's like earlier I was talking to them about, uh, like don't don't hold the thing and hit it with your hatchet, you know, hold it with a stick and so you know, your fingers aren't near the, you know, uh, you no, know no, people no. That, that don't think, that don't use that stuff, they don't think about it. And, you know, I know a lot of people have like chainsaws in their garage and in case, you know, and they've never taken a class on how to use it or even read the fucking manual mm. or watch a YouTube video for heaven's sake. And uh, they get those things out and they're, they're, they're quite dangerous. Um, uh, so, um, so uh, some tricks, some tri tricks or techniques to get out of an urban environment. And so while you're mulling that over, I'm saying get out early, mm -hmm. like, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. be an early adopter of getting the fuck out of town. Um, and I think we all realize, like, uh, with hurricanes and stuff like that, if you go out days and days ahead when they tell you, hey, you should think about getting the fuck out of here, guess what? There's gasoline along your route, there's hotels along your route, and stuff like that. But if you wait, um, you 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 really you're really in a bad spot so i'm going to say if possible get out as soon as you can um and then now let's say boom it's on and everybody's trying to get out of town i'm going to tell you to fucking bide your time i'm going to tell you to let the mad dash of everybody splitting i'm going to tell you to go ahead and let that happen before you go out uh, so you can kind of see what's going on and listen to the radio or the TV if you can and, and get reports about, you know, what's going on on the, on the route out of there. What, what do you got, Jay? Um, along the route thing, uh, look at uh, your map or <coughs> aerial photos or whatever. If you have them of your town, you can get it uh, on the Internet or whatever. But identify all the choke points uh, out of that area, out of that town or whatever. Because if, if it's... We're preemptively going, like that's that's our cutoff. We got to make it past that bridge, right. or we got to canyon, you know, uh, you know, a pass, a, a physical a barrier. bridge, yep. you know. So, if, like, we, whatever it is, like, once we decide to go, that's the finish line. We got to, you know, we got to make it past that, because if we don't, then, and then on the other side of that, if we uh, hesitate or hold up and allow the masses to plug the two <coughs> points um, be prepared to kind of stay and wait wait that out because they're just going to plug that artery up yeah. and nobody's coming in either direction and then yeah. if you're if you're an early adopter you're gone if you wait till the rush is on then you're sitting in traffic and i believe that your situation you'd be better off at home than you mm -hmm. would be sitting in traffic somewhere at least at home you have options and you, you run out of options if you're sitting in traffic with your family. You, what are you going to do with them? And, uh, you know, so... That, Pro that. And, and probably at these choke points, you're probably going to be on foot to get to get through that. I'm not a, I'm not in, envisioning an, a vehicle to be able to get through it. Right. Uh, that was... Uh, uh, Ed uh, Twifford asked that. Then Doug Arnold asked about lock, lock picking and breaching. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say no. Uh, that's that's like if the the world came to an end or something like that. But we're just talking about a, you know, we're talking about a uh, call it a, a three to fourteen day disaster or emergency thing. Um, that's a different thing. Land, land nav. I'm gonna say no. And what I mean by that is uh, I've got some some maps and stuff we can talk about uh, talk about route planning and stuff on Jay later on, not tonight, but later on. And uh, I'm gonna tell you that. Um, that uh, this is a horrible time to try to figure out how to use a map and go like you know if you if you want to learn correct land nav and you want to make sure that you have maps 
that you can use for that land nav, that's great. But otherwise, you're going to be basically stuck to a road map. And I'm going to tell you, uh, wandering off a, just across country thinking you're going the short way or whatever, that could be a recipe for disaster even with your family. So I'm going to tell you that you're going to probably want to stick to the highways and byways if you're walking or whatever, you know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm just saying, I, I don't know. I don't know. What do you What do you say, Jay? Mm, I mean, uh, if you want to know how to do that, great. You should. Uh, just general, general knowledge. But um, understand, you're going to be carrying a smaller version of whatever you consider to be your equipment base, and uh, we're actually leaving shelter. Uh, so. And the first, you know, natural barrier that you run into, a river, uh, canyon, well, whatever the case may be, if you can't cross that, then you're kind of stuck there. I know a lot of people talk about using railroad tracks. Well, other people will too. Mm -hmm. um, but in case you've never seen a railroad bridge before, like that goes across a canyon, uh, that's pretty... Uh, if you're afraid of heights or if there's anybody in your group, your family that's afraid of heights, they're not going to walk across a, a railroad bridge that traverses a ravine. It's this is not going to happen. There's no there's no guardrails. You can see through it. If you misstep, you could fall through maybe, or at least your leg could. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and another thing is following power lines. People say, "Oh, I will follow the power lines." When the power lines get to a river, they just go on across the river. But there's a river there that you'd have to cross if you were follow, following those power lines, and and. Uh, and, or ravine or whatever the case may be so those power lines may or may not be uh, godsend for you yeah the, um, and also on the flip side of that like understanding uh, land navigation is being able to determine how people that might want to do you harm or take what you have are going to get to you uh, so avenues of approach that they will be using and you might want to try to get ahead of that maybe like you know, block that thing up or, you know, whatever, or at least, uh, uh, you know, maybe an early warning, uh, that type of stuff. Cause, you know, if they got enough, if they got hungry enough people in their group and they think you're doing well. Well, that was one of the things. What, what can you do about security? And uh, so we know if we have multiple people, we'll take turns, but what if it's just us? It's going to be rough. <laughs> going to be some long long hitches uh, uh, long, I don't I don't know if they still do it but many years ago a, a sniper team was just two guys and so that was you know easily 12 on yeah 12 off or you had to break it up because nobody can do a straight 12 it's, right. it's not a but that's essentially what you're doing um, and then trying to place it like there's a switch like in the half hour so there's still somebody awake 30 minutes on the back side of that and there's somebody coming around 30 minutes into that so there's some degree of overlap in there because if two is all you got then um, that's gonna it's gonna be tough but I, 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 I don't know of any other way to do it than that yeah I don't know it'd be tough so it'd be like what he's saying is it'd be like whatever Four and a half hours on, four hours off, or something mm, like that. Two, two, <laughs> or, two, or, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, however you want to, however you want to chop it up, and it has a lot to do with you know, like how, how far did you move today? You know, was yeah. it, was it, you know, was it a rough day, or are we okay? Uh, so that's gonna, that's gonna determine that, and that's where those caffeine pills will come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, that's a, that's a tough one when you're by yourself, and there's there's of course electronic countermeasures but mm. now we're talking carrying a bunch of stuff and and now like they know for sure you're there because now they've set off the alarm or you know whatever mm. so it's, uh, it's no no easy answer there for sure um uh, evan dixon tips for route planning to get from a to b what to avoid what to look for i think we kind of jay kind of hit on it when we started talking about choke points and stuff like that mm -hmm. and if you if you know where a is and know where b is uh and, and you think, wow, I might have to walk this, then, then walk it. Not, and I hope we're not talking about 500 miles, but if we're talking about from work to home and things like that, you know, think about how would you get there if you couldn't get there, you know, by a car or whatever your normal, your normal route is. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
but uh, but no more than one way to get from A to B. This this is kind of like when Jay and I've done protective work. You know, you you just can't take the same route every day with your client. Eventually, somebody will figure it out. Uh, so you try to have multiple routes and things like that, and eventually they're always going to get you where you leave or where you get where you're going. <laughs> but mm -hmm. but uh, you, you can't make it easy for them. And so I'll I'll tell you if. Um, if you are a daily commuter to your job, uh, why not have, uh, if you work Monday through Friday, why not have five different routes that you go back and forth to work? And this, this will do a couple things for you. It'll make you more familiar with what's, what's normal along those routes. Uh, and it gives you, you know, new ways to go. And something a lot of people don't do, they're used to going back and forth to work uh, just from, from memory. If you've never turned your GPS on, your GPS might take you on a shorter route that you didn't even know was there. And uh, so, so use, uh, uh, I think I just read uh, Savage Sun and uh, one of the things in there was ex exploit all uh, technical and tactical advantages. <coughs> and so, so do that. Anything else on that, Jay, or? Um, yeah. No, not okay. Really. Uh, Archangel says tactics for traversing urban areas, covert, overt, etc. Route selection. I, I guess we kind of talked about route selection already. Um, but uh, everybody's like, because I talked about perfect bug out guns, a 1022 takedown. You can take it down and put it in your pack, right? Mm. Well, if you if you're walking and you're going to go through go through a town, uh, you're going to walk through with your fucking AK. Just you think that's not going to you know, now they're going to think you might be there for, you might be the guy that they're protecting themselves against. So, uh, I get it, uh, you know, but uh, <clears throat> I, I at least want the ability to look like uh, I am covert, like I am not, not having guns sticking out all over the place and all that. I, I at least want that option. So, for me, a, a gun that I can put in the pack, uh, in, a, in a reasonable size pack, is a, is a big deal. Jay, anything on that? No, you want to you want to conceal that, and I know it sounds strange. You got to con conceal in your your big gun, but uh, you know you don't want them to know that you got it until until you want them to know that you got it, and then uh, now by now we're probably pressing the trigger. So, uh, and uh, again, you know something. You guys have probably all heard this before. Try not to do the military style thing if you're going to do. You know. Uh, type equipment, gear, dress, you know, yeah. they, they, we tend to get back on this discussion again, but uh, I, it, at least if you're going to do that, uh, g uh, walk, move determined, like, you know, make them pick somebody else. Yeah. L look like that you're not the guy they want to want to fuck with. So uh, Daniel Klingman says, keeping warm with the fire or having fire in a stealthy way, uh, obviously cloths and bivy, but up north, obviously clothes and bivvies, blah, blah, blah. But up north here, um, I fear it's not survivable without a fire. So I, I agree. I, I don't have to have a fire tonight. It's going to get down to about uh, 20 tonight, and I can get by with what I got without a fire. Um, how to do that, uh, you know, covertly. Earlier, I had you in some places that were low on both sides. That were uh, it, was, it was a low spot, and uh, and then you can't see through the the tarps. So if covert was a thing, first off, you're probably not going to be able to use, have a fire. But as Daniel said, it, it's a hundred percent chance of death if I don't build a fire. It's less than a hundred percent chance of death if somebody catches me. Uh, I get it. So I would figure out the best way to do it. Like I meant to show this from from back there where I'm at. I'm on what's kind of called a military crest of a hill. I'm not at the top of a hill or the bottom. I'm kind of in the middle. So from the other side, they couldn't see me. If I was on top, they could see the fire from 360 degrees. But from, from where I'm at here, uh, less, less visible. And uh, so if I had another tarp or you uh, picked the, the, the land correctly uh, or built a debris wall, I could hide a fire pretty good. As far as sight, smell, it'd be a different story, but it's hard to track a smell. Uh, but uh, but uh, I would say, if I lived in one of those northern things, I would have enough clothes, like 
uh, you know, outdoor clothing that building a fire uh, would be a, would be a want to, not a have to. And I know mm. I see these guys with these cold weather suits, the snowmobiling suits, and all that shit. So I know they I make I know they make cold shit. We don't. Jay's from Florida and I'm from Tennessee, <laughs> so we don't know what that shit is. But I'd certainly have that at least as an option. Some of the the uh, military extreme cold weather uh, system clothes and all that stuff. And uh, this is Daniel's wood that we're burning here. This, Thank you, sir. This is the, yeah, well, I told him if, mm -hmm. if I froze to death, it's on Daniel. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, Matthew Riggins, um, James, last book out video was great. Could you spend more time and go into further detail about how to set up the shelter with your tarps? Um, I think I did, uh, Matthew, I think I did with this one. I talked about it. I think more and kind of went what I did and um, experiment with some more stuff, different ways to hang it. And I do like these little, these little hangers. I got these little pulley ropes things. Um, but, uh, but uh, I, th I think I did that for you, and uh, and hopefully I, hopefully I did it. Um, so uh, somebody asked um, about uh, kids uh, keeping them occupied and keeping them quiet. Like, how do you, how do you make your kids understand what quiet is? I would say that you're going to have to just do it. Like. Take them out in the woods and say, okay, for the next five minutes, you know, like when I snap my fingers or when I do this or do that, we're going to be quiet, like for real quiet. And and believe it or not, if you can get them into it, that might keep them occupied for a few minutes. But other than that, teach your kids how to play card games. You can keep a deck of cards almost anywhere. Teach your kids how to play fish or rummy or, or something like that. Like, like literally teach them how to do that. Teach them how to play solitaire. Um... But uh, it, it's uh, it's tough with little kids, especially. But uh, but uh, hopefully they'll be so tired. <laughs> but probably mm -hmm. what'll happen is you'll wind up carrying the little ones, and you'll be so tired you won't be able to do anything about it. But uh, um, but the, the kids is a tough one, and uh, and I got a bunch of grandkids, so it's uh, something that, so, certainly something to think about. If I come up with something better, I'll let you know. Um, did you want to talk about that at all, Jay? Kids? No, I don't have kids. So. <laughs> well, but you know what kids are. <laughs> <laughs> Just smaller versions of us. <laughs> well, William Adams, um, headlamp that works. I've got a, a Bushnell over there that's great. Um, had, I've had great luck with it. Um, uh, I, I got to tell you, the, the Energizer, the cheap Energizer ones from Walmart, I've got a bunch of those, and they just work really great. You know, and uh, of course you can't leave out pencil when you're talking about uh, headlamps. They they build like the you know the, the high end nice ones, um, but uh, that uh, the Bushnell that I got uh, is is really nice. And I, on, in my Amazon store, I think I got a two pack of the Bushnells for they're like I think twenty four dollars I think for the two pack or something like that. Uh, I mean they're they're really good. But the Energizers at Walmart, I've had just tremendous good luck with them. Any headlamp stuff? The Surefire make headlamps? Yeah. I think, I, I like the Surefire headlamps, but they're really expensive. I mean, they're like mm. 150 bucks, and I'd rather have, I'd rather have, you Multiple. know, 10 or 15 of the Energizers than one of them. I would get them and stash them in. I got, I got them in my toolbox, my med bag. Yeah, all my bed bags. Any, got them. Anywhere where both hands got to go in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, William Adam says, uh, get it, getting uphill where it's warmer. I was explaining to him that if you're down by the water, mm -hmm. it's 10, 15 degrees colder than if you just go up, you know, on the hill a little bit. And uh, so I guess that's what he's talking about. But, uh, but yeah, so like if you're backpacking in the summer, yeah, get down there by the creek, get down by running water. It's going to be cooler. Uh, but if it's winter time, fill your, your jugs up, then go up the hill and camp. It's going to definitely be warmer. Um, uh, J.D. Coy says, uh, if you live in a big city, now would be the time to bug out. Um, James, what chance do you estimate that a couple living in a big city with small children has to successfully, uh, successfully bugging out in the midst of some shit that causes everyone to bug out? My estimate is that between slim and none. Hence my advice, leave now. Yeah, if you're not going to leave way early, it goes back to what I said. JD, uh, then stay where you're at. Be prepared, uh, you know, food, water, shelter to stay where you're at um, as long as you can. Uh, if you got little kids, like walking out is not a, not even not even an issue. You're not even an issue with little kids. So, 
So if you can't drive out way early and get going, then uh, be prepared to be at home. Like take steps now to, to be there at home with your kids. Uh, Heath Blevins, uh, possible issues. Oh, wait a minute, anything on that, Jay? No. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to just leave right. you off there. Uh, Heath says possible issues and protection from wildlife, especially while sleeping. Well, earlier, you heard the coyotes earlier. You could, mm -hmm. I could just not hear them. And around here, we've had a, uh, a resurgence of mountain lions. Uh, they've been on caught on game cameras the county east of us and west of us and I think north of us. So that probably means they're in this county too, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. uh, Surrounded. <laughs> they, they, we got them right where we want them. <laughs> uh, but uh, typically, uh, wildlife doesn't want any part of you. Uh, it's That's that's unusual. And uh, mountain lion would be the only thing around here that would cause a real problem. But I think the fire and all that stuff, I think, could keep them away. I mean, I think I, I, mountain lion attacks are something that happens, but uh, they are pretty rare. And uh, so I'm not so worried about, worried about it. It doesn't mean I shouldn't be worried, but I think between the fire and... Uh, bad attitude I have. Anything about animals, Jay? Mm, keep, keep your guns with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Eric, this is more route stuff. Um, yeah, um, yeah, Eric, um, he's asking more route stuff. I Again, Eric, he's uh, asking about routes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he's saying I'll probably wind up being on the street for a good portion. Plan on it. Plan on being on the street. I don't have a problem with that. At least, at least we don't have to worry about you getting lost. I mean, if you got lost and died of exposure or, or died of thirst or something like that, it's just like getting shot on the street. You know, how on the street, you probably got a pistol. You probably, you can't gunfight, you know, starvation, <laughs> you know, or, or hypothermia, you know. Um, improvised shelter. Um, you can build what's called a debris shelter. Especially if you find a tree that's kind of fallen over, but it's stabilized, and you can pile sticks on both sides of it and kind of make a little, little uh, lean-to out of that. It's uh, not very time-consuming, but it uh, doesn't really offer you much, really. It offers you protection from wind, but not from rain. And, and if you augmented that with your tarp, of course, it'd be from, for the rain, too. Anything on improvised shelter. You're, you're in an improvised shelter down there in your truck. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's what it is. I yeah. Mean, no, I mean... Um just if you understand a few concepts in there about like retaining heat and uh, uh, shedding water off of you, blocking wind off of you. Yeah. Uh, so beyond that, the shape of whatever it is and materials kind of up to your imagination. So, yeah. uh, you know, if you can learn as many different types and and actually do them, like you know, do a trial run yeah. on them before you have to, before your hands are shaking and yeah. you're, you know, like, before it's too late. Yeah, you know, before you're like, fuck my life, you know. <laughs> uh, you want to be able to have, you know, say, okay, I, I know my way around this. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, the city stuff is tough because it's uh, in comparison to like moving. If you, you can get a map of rural places and you can say, okay, there's a creek, so be prepared to cross that. There's a road, be prepared to cross that, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I, you know, I doubt like the city ones would, might show you dead ends or, um, or um, I don't know, like uh, buildings that cut across, you <laughs> right. know what I mean? Archways like, and stuff. Yeah, and you're like, whoa, I can't walk through this. So there's, that's that's a tough one. You're going to have to do a, You have to do it. You're going to have to do some more um, route walking them. Yeah. And figuring out how you're going to do it. And it's like, all right, and what would hamper my my speed? Uh, yeah. Injury, uh, someone that can't move, someone that's injured, someone that's elderly, um, you know that type of thing. And uh, and don't don't leave out a bicycle. Um, mm -hmm. My my brother keeps a folding folding bicycle in his vehicle. Mm -hmm. He lives about 45 minutes from his house, and if something happened, he can he can uh, in a, via car he can bike that in a day, no big deal. Um, so me and Jay used to be in mountain biking pretty big. I remember when, the first day we rode our mountain bikes, we came off a hill in the state park and went, I think we need helmets. <laughs> <laughs> it was going yeah. like 100 miles an hour. Like, yeah, oh, my yeah. God. I was like, yeah, I didn't think. And we hit some, like, some pea gravel. Or something. <laughs> I said, yeah, this is it. Jello and crayons coming up. Uh, uh, so um, uh, 
so somebody asked about what to do with weapons while sleeping. He and he was given some good advice. He said if you keep it like right beside you, it'll suck the heat away from you. You know, like you got a rifle, it's not going to heat up like you know your your clothes will. And so keeping it like in the sleeping bag with you will rob you of some heat. Uh, but I certainly wouldn't leave it far away for sure. Uh, mine's against the tree, and mine's going to go under this under this plastic right here between me and the fire. That's where mine's going to go. Um, Jay, anything on that? No, you do want to keep them nearby, accessible, cover them up. Um, because, you know, the first indicator that there's somebody there, <laughs> they're already mounted on top of you, punching you in the face. Uh, so I don't want them to know that that thing's there until yeah. I'm either punching them with it or shooting them with it. Yeah, yeah, same, same. Uh, if they know it's there, they might just shoot you from right? the, or stab you from the beginning. Uh, somebody was asking about how to deal with condensation, uh, not just like inside of a tent. And um, so like the shelters I've been doing, uh, uh, I would be lucky to get any con condensation in them. But uh, um, it, uh, I, I would say just, uh, you know, the, the uh, to condensation, the two things that combat condensation are, are airflow and heat. And so, you know, you're... You're not doing one of those if you if you got excessive condensation. If you got what we're talking about, guys, if you ever slept in a tent, even in an arid and arid environment, if you sleep in a pretty pretty airtight tent, you breathe out all this uh, vapor over the night and it clings to the to the tent. If you touch the tent, it's like rains on you inside. It's kind of nasty, really, waking up like that. But uh, just a fact of life in the South, we just deal with the humidity and the condensation constantly. It's just we don't like it, but it's just not—it's not a not a, even a thing that we even consider anymore. Uh, I suggest uh, lithium batteries for everything, and uh, what I mean by that is if you have a little weather radio, something I was going to talk about earlier, you can get little bitty radios uh, that that do weather. Uh, that that might be a handy thing for your pack, uh, but uh, but for any of your any of your stuff, uh, I suggest lithium batteries. Uh, because how many times have you opened a thing that took alkaline batteries and the corrosion and ruined the thing and just ah, threw it away? So the extra expense, lithium batteries don't do that. So the ex extra expense on the lithium batteries, number one, protects you from that kind of leakage of that acid. But number two, lithium batteries, uh, if they're stored for 10 years, still have 70% of their power in them after 10 years. Now after 10 years it drops off pretty fast, but for 10 years you, you got something you can count on. So so in that in that weather radio, in that flashlight, in that headlamp, and that thing, uh, lithium batteries. Jay, anything on that? No. Um, uh, and that's all I got. That's all the, that's all the kind of the the news that's fit to be printed. Yeah, that's all the questions I had from, from those folks. You got anything else you want to talk about? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> I, think, I think you did a better job on the fire for sure. <laughs> it feels like there's real warmth coming out of it. <laughs> well, cool. Oh, well, yeah, you know, it's like when, when, the, when I'm camping and the sun goes down, I'm like, well, it's bedtime. <laughs> you <Right>. know <laughs> what is it oh it's seven o'clock you know so uh, my, yeah my brain is not ready for bed for sure yeah, everybody's up at three yeah <laughs> yeah i don't plan on that but that happens to me even when i'm at home though right yeah i don't know i don't know what to do about that <laughs> I, I think it's just the way you are man you've always kind of been like that and then somewhere between three and sunrise i have to pick an activity that doesn't make noise so out comes the phone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and then it's like, oh no, he's uh, doing yeah. it again. Oh uh, no. <laughs> his uh, his wife is uh, uh, sometimes amused uh, by his uh, political um, activities. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell them what you've like. You'll post on the the, the websites. Oh well, if if you you don't know, uh, I. I I guess until I get a, a real hobby, I guess this will do. <laughs> but uh, I uh, go on YouTube and I go to the MSNBC, any anything posted up there, and uh, I just uh, if they're talk if, if they're talking about a, elections, uh, or uh, they 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 really got me going back during the original Russia Gate one. I, I had a lot of fun with that one. 
<laughs> and it looks like I'm gonna have some more. <laughs> but uh, so uh, <laughs> she's probably like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I would just go on there and uh, say that uh, elections are too critical to allow voters to meddle in them. And I would just leave it there. You so hit them at three in the morning, you know. <laughs> And then, so round zero seven or whatever, they're like, you know, just stir in and like, let's check this out. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you said it. Yeah. That's stupid it. voters. That's right, brother. And I'm like, that's right. <laughs> they could elect the wrong dude again. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, wait a minute. Yeah. And they're like, wait, who's the wrong dude? I said, I don't know. Who is the wrong dude? <laughs> and uh, so, and then, uh, what's the other one? I just ask them questions, and uh, when they can't answer them, it's just it makes them really mad, and they yeah. say a lot of funny stuff. I don't, but I won't say there's like two converts. I don't know if that's the right word, but I had two. I've had two circumstances where it's it started out immediately nasty, and I don't I don't call them names or anything like this. But this guy came at it, you know, name calling right off the bat, and. Uh, so, so I kept it, you know, civil. And uh, so at this time, my wife's looking at my what's going on on the phone. <laughs> and she's like, why do you bother doing this? Like, all these people calling you stupid and, you know, what, a bunch of other names. And, um, and I said, I, I don't know. Just, I don't know. Maybe there's hope, you know. Maybe, right. maybe, maybe wrangle one back in, you know. <laughs> and uh, so uh, uh, the guy finally comes to it. Just He's so mad at this point. Uh, that uh, he just says, well, you know, uh, you and all your other people that believe in what you believe in are going to take a long nap one of these days, if you know what I mean. And I said, that day comes to us all, period. And uh, right after that, the guy says, God bless you and your family. Stay safe. And I said, you too. And I showed, the, showed that to my wife, and she was like, oh, damn. <laughs> she's like that flipped around real quick and uh, she's like uh was it worth it and i was like yeah 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 nice. it, was, it was worth it nice and uh so she said how many of those have you had i said this is the second one <laughs> <laughs> so there's not a lot of them <laughs> that's two that's two two more than i had before <laughs> but it i i did kind of promised myself I wouldn't get too involved in that type of stuff, you know, the back and forth on the yeah, thing, yeah. and then I'd, you know, damn if I didn't do it, you know. <laughs> and, and they're like, you know, don't, don't, don't answer the comments, don't answer the comments, don't, and then I see one, I, I gotta answer that. <laughs> He's not getting away with that one, you know. And, uh, uh, I have so much fun, so much fun on the internets. I bet. Oh, dude, people, you're an idiot, oh, really? <laughs> okay. I mean, you can call me a lot of things, but I mean, I don't, you know, fucking idiot. I don't know about that. But. It's usually, for me, it's usually going to be a, a, a personal insult. Yeah. And then some reference to Fox News. Yeah, yeah. And they'll tell me to read something. Uh huh. They'll tell me to catch, get caught up, or catch up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, on something, I was like, hey. Remember, I'm the guy that was up at three this morning telling you that that. <laughs> so, so I don't need to catch up. <laughs> oh, people. Um, so yeah, so it's just that's that's kind of like the the ejection seat. You know, that's how yeah. you can see it coming. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I'm like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Moving on. <laughs> Good shit. All right, well, I, I guess the James and Jay show should come to an end. <laughs> <laughs> before we start telling bad secrets but uh, jay i appreciate you uh hanging out with me uh here and uh hope you don't get cold down if you get cold i got a nice warm spot right here i'll warm it up <laughs> for right. you you just come on up and uh so i'll see you. i'll smell like campfire again in the morning but hopefully i'll be warm this time it you I will feel, be I, I think you're gonna be this right. is the warmest fire i've built in the last few weeks are you here. doing the clear stuff no i was just gonna no. do th do this this time yeah. Just to just to try it, just to see what the difference was. And I, I don't have the same tarp. I got this is just a Walmart tarp, but it's silver on the, mm -hmm. and I, I just was curious if it would reflect heat like the other one. And I don't know if it will or not, but um, I think you'll be all right.
So if you like that stuff, you can right below the video, you can check my Amazon store to, to get, get, get more information. And if you buy through my Amazon store, I appreciate it. I get a tiny little kickback from that. It doesn't cost you any extra. And, uh, and if you are more interested, if you have follow-up questions, probably if you watch the whole video, uh, BS bug out one or two or whatever one we're on, um, you, you probably get more of your answer. Uh, but if you're, if you want to comment and teach me how to build a fire, I don't need your help building a fire. This is James Jacob with Time Response reminding you that your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends.